Hi, I'm Emily, and I'm going to show you how to make your very own talking flower that we have showcased in our Malice in Wonderland Halloween display here at Rogers Gardens. Now, this DIY seems like it would be really difficult to do, but I'm going to show you how easy it really is. Here are the tools that you need. Modeling clay and clay tools, super glue and gloves, matte medium, white paint, various shades of red paint, some that do match the petals of the rose, a large paintbrush and a fine tipped paintbrush, a sponge brush, tweezers to help hold small pieces of clay, small scissors, a box cutter or exacto knife, a bud vase, resin, and a bowl of water. The first step is you want to cut the hair of your doll. So you cut off the big part and you want to just get the fine bits off as much as you can. Why I like to do this is that the hair doesn't affect the clay when you start applying it and also when you start the painting process. Next up is the claying process. What you want to do is take the clay and you really want to um, accentuate the features because the doll is actually painted flat. So you really want to make eyelids and you can basically make your face however you want and you can always do multiple flowers and each face could be different. And then this is a great time to use your tweezers and your super glue if you need to attach, if it doesn't attach as well without it.
and you want to take a little bit of clay, you want to flatten it out and make it as thin as possible and you can make it a little bit wavy so it looks like a small petal. And what I like to do is use my sponge brush as a roller to kind of flatten it out a little bit more. So you can continue to repeat this process as many petals as you like. It's really designer's choice. For painting, I really like to use brighter reds and even have a darker tone to give depth. To apply the base coat, I like to use a darker color with a larger paintbrush. I do paint over the eyes and the mouth, and you will be cutting the face off eventually, but I do like to paint a little bit more than the face, a little bit around the ears and a little bit down the neck and above. Um, all the way up to the hairline on the forehead. So now it's time to cut the face. You can use a box cutter or an X-Acto knife, but just make sure you're careful when holding the knife. I want to start the at rose. the hairline and go all the way around. Because it's a rubber doll, it's pretty easy to cut but just still make sure you're careful and you want to go in front of the ears and then just go right underneath the chin so you can open it up and see kind of where the cut is and if you have a little bit of hairline still on the edge you can always take your small scissors and cut off the rest of that or any rough edges that you may have So once your face is cut, what I like to do is just paint the edges of it. So I take my fine tip paintbrush and continue with my darker color and just any little smudges or mishaps that you want to cover up. But I definitely like to get the edges just so when you attach it to the rose, you don't have to worry about going back in with your paintbrush and possibly affecting the flower petals. So take your rose and what you want to do is open it up and sometimes there's like a real sharp tip to the inside of the rose. You want to just cut that off. That way your face has a little bit more of a surface to adhere to and you want to put your super glue on it 
and then you just attach your face right to that and you might just take need to take a little bit of time to let it dry so what you want to do after you attach the face is kind of fluff out the petals and you want to just make sure you cover up any imperfections or like the hole where the neck is so you want to take your super glue and attach it just under the chin and you want to adhere petals to it and just give it some time to dry So once your face is dried and it fully adhered to the rose, you want to take the red color that's brighter, that matches a little bit more to the petals, and you want to use your fine tip paintbrush and cover the entire face. You also want to make sure you paint the clayed petals that you attach to the sides of the face. And then you want to take your sponge brush and dip in a little bit of water, and what you can do is just dabble it all over and it spreads out that really bright red tone all over the face. So we continue to paint until the entire face is completely red. So you just want to keep step-by-step -step process of using your fine tip paintbrush and also going back in with that sponge brush. So next you want to go over with a rosy color and start your highlights. This is for the lips, this is also for the ridges of the petals, any cheekbones or raised surfaces within your face. Next you want to take your white paint with your fine tip paintbrush and this is when you want to actually color in the eyes. So go slow, you can always go back over any mistakes with red and then just start over with the white again. If you kind of want a more menacing flower, you really could leave the eyes just plain white. It's a little zombie-like, a little more menacing. That is a perfect touch right there. So if you have a doll with an open mouth, you can continue with your white paint and paint right between the lips as like teeth. Same thing, if you make any mistakes, you can always go over those mistakes with the red paint and then just go back over with white again. So you want to take the same rosy color that matches your highlights on your lips and that's the color you want to use for the irises of your eyes. So you just do really tiny, tiny little circles. Same thing if you make a mistake, you can go back over with the white paint and then go back with your rosy color. So you want to try to make your irises a little bit even in size if you can. So 
So you want to take your darker color, your base coat, if you will, and that is what you want to use as your pupil. So you just do an even smaller circle on the iris. Same thing if you make a mistake, go back with your iris color. So now you want to take the white paint and this is kind of what gives your rose life. You want to add a dot on the upper level right above the pupil and then diagonally a small dot right below the pupil and that is the reflection of light that shows in the eyes. So when everything is done being painted and dried on your eyes, you want to use matte medium. What I like about matte medium, it just gives a really flat and polished finish to your paint job. So you just paint it all over your face, all on the petals, on the mouth, and even on the eyes. And you just let that dry and it just gives a really beautiful finish to your face. So you want to take a simple bud base and your rose, and if you want your flower to stand upright, you can actually put tape in a grid form on either side, but I actually like mine to lean naturally. Um, you want to take any kind of box of resin that you have at a craft store and just follow the directions and you pour it in and let it set. If you have a rose that is too long, you can actually cut it down with wire cutters and you can actually bend it to a more natural look. Thank you for joining me and I hope you have fun making your own talking flower. And if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, please like and subscribe to our Rogers Gardens channel and also be sure to follow us on all of our social media platforms. Happy Halloween!